guys, welcome to Latitude Talent Studios. I'm Sophia and I'm your host today for the webinar about modeling and acting and the entertainment industry and the business side of everything. So today, let me know if you're joining in, if you have questions, where you're from. Hello, we just got some people. What's up? How are you guys? Give me some love in the comments. Let me know if you have any questions you want to ask specifically. I am your go-to guru in terms of everything entertainment business side. So today's topic is body positive, how real people can be models. Hi, hi. So today we're going to talk about a lot of different things, including um, being a model, obviously, and how you can be a model if you're not 5'10", a size zero, and you know, blonde and blue eyed which is what we've been told basically our whole life. But you know, times are changing, which is a great thing. Oh my God, love the hearts, thank you. Times are changing and it's time to get with the times and represent people who actually look like everybody. Look like you, look like me, look like people on TV, look like people who are on TV, look like people you've never seen, the people who you're like, oh, I didn't know they were a model. I didn't know they could be an actor, that kind of stuff. So let me know if you guys have questions, let them in the chat, please. I will definitely respond because I'm checking the comments right now. So um, I'm going to get started. So I'm going to touch on a few different topics today, a few different bullet points about the topic of body positive, how real people can be models, including, I'll just hit them now briefly and I'm going to go into them specifically. So one of them is weight, measurements, real bodies, um, slash terminology and how, what to look for in terms of if you're submitting, um, clothes to complement your shape, angles come comfortability of your shoots, what you're comfortable doing, boundaries, that kind of stuff, building portfolio, and how to go about doing it. So let me get started. Okay, so weight. This topic, okay, if you're joining and you're sensitive to talking about topics that have to do with weight, eating disorder, bulimia, that kind of stuff, this probably isn't the best webinar for you. So I'm going to tell you right now, because we're going to be talking about size and body. Um, which really is the entertainment industry, a lot of it. So like you have to figure out if this is something you want to do, because as I always say, as an actor slash model, you are your brand, you are your product. Like if I worked for Versace and I was selling these sunglasses and my product is what? My product's not me. My product is these Versace sunglasses. These are not Versace sunglasses. Okay, these are amazing, cute little sunglasses I got on the street because I always lose sunglasses. So I don't believe buying designer sunglasses or I don't really have designer or anything, but um, I just am using this as an example. So we love these glasses, right? So I'm going to model these glasses. I'm the model. I'm not the product. The product is on me. Okay, I'm showcasing the product. So these sunglasses, oh, okay, hello, who is she? How are you? These sunglasses are my product. I have to go to a manufacturer to get the plastic, to get the factory, to get the personnel, the workforce, the employees, all of the above, right? I have to get the labels. I have to get sales associates to sell the product. I have to get models to model the product. I have to get ads for social media, TV, print, magazines, subway ads, radio, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You're a business owner. You're a CEO. You've got a lot of stuff you're always doing because you are your best and worst critic, you are your employer, you are your cashier, you are your CEO, you are your bookkeeper, you are your accountant, you are the secretary, and you are the person selling the product. So, these sunglasses are the product, right? But when it comes to being a model and an actor, what's my product, guys? It's me, I'm the product. Me, my eyes, my skin, my hair, my face, my body, my voice, everything, my personality, how I look, how I present myself, what I wear, my sense of style, my attitude, you know, my my essence is a, ver is a word people love to use in the acting industry, your essence, your essence. What does that mean? It just means you, your personality, right? So, you are your product. So your product is your body, like I said before, and your body is your weight, your body is, your management of how you look, your day-to-day, -day, your eyebrows, your makeup, your skin, your voice, your hair, skin, nails, etc. So the thing about body positive, how real people can be models, this webinar this topic, we have to talk about weight because this is changing in the industry, but it's not changing as quickly as maybe we'd all like it to, but it's a thing. 
So a lot of times for acting and modeling submissions, submissions meaning people who are looking for jobs, casting, casting calls, whatever you want to call it, breakdowns, etc. So with that, they're going to ask you what is your weight. And that seems like, oh, why are they asking that? Are they literally a doctor? Why do they need to know that? And it's like, nobody's trying to embarrass you. People who are casting you are looking out for your best interest. They're rooting for you. They're your cheerleaders. They have a problem to solve. They need a model who's gonna model these sunglasses and they don't have a model. So they're looking for people in order for them to know who they're looking for. They have an idea of who they want. And sometimes they don't have an idea of one. And that's when you come in and you're like, oh, I'm what they want. Let me show them what they want because I am the solution to their problem right you gotta look at it like that because it'll really help you be less personal not as heavy into rejection it's crazy like okay i will say one side thing um you literally going into a field this is you're not you're either gonna like this you're gonna laugh at it or you're gonna be like what am i doing with my life when i say this you're going into a field where you're going to hear no so many times now you probably heard that, but no, no, I'm going to go further. You're going into a field where no is going to be your default and yes is going to be the lottery. Yes is going to be the, oh my God, I booked it. Yay. Whereas no is going to be like, oh, I'm probably not going to book that. And that's not being, being pessimistic. It's me being realistic. Now that's not to say you will book things. I'm saying that you should be aiming for yes. But that's for your own mental well-being so that you know that you're not always going to hear a yes every single gig, right? You're going to hear no way more often. Actors and models will face rejection in their life. The amount of rejection that actors and models will face is how much a regular human in a non-traditional, in a traditional career path will face throughout their entire life. I'm going to say that again because I really need to send it with you guys. So, as an actor and model in the entertainment industry, freelancer, creative, whatever you want to call it, um, influencer, whatever, as, in, as someone who's in a fickle, roller coaster, crazy career, things change all the time. You book things, you don't shoot them. You don't book things, you shoot them. You don't audition, you book them. You audition, you, you don't book them. You know, it's crazy. No one knows. You will literally, I'm going to say it again, face more rejection in a lifetime of an adult in like a given year. So you need to get strong. You need to be mentally strong. You need to be spiritually strong. You need to be physically strong. You need to be emotionally strong to handle what this industry is because this industry is cutthroat. This industry will spit you, to eat you and spit you out. I don't know what the expression is, but you know what I mean. Um, and that's crazy. You know, people think that being an actor and model is easy, but honestly, as someone who's a working actor and model and who hustles and grinds and literally this is my life profession, like I'm in it for the long haul, my life is crazier, busier, and I would argue harder than someone who has a nine to five, who has structure, has ease, knows what they're going to do at this certain day at that time, knows where the best picture is going to come from every single week, has benefits, you know and has an easier time in terms of grasping things. The question is, what am I doing in my life? Why am I doing this? Because I love it and I don't wanna do a regular traditional job. And this is my calling and I've already decided that. And if you wanna get in this industry, do your toes and whatever, you'll, you'll have the, that time of your life where like, what am I doing? What, where is this going? You know, you'll have that time. But I just want you guys to know what you're getting yourselves into. And in terms of this webinar, specifically being about body positivity and how real people can be models, it's important to understand that you have to be strong in terms of the rejection and then you have to be strong in terms of your body type. Like, I actually personally have done a lot with my body image and mental well-being because, you know, this industry is hard. It'll make you question things that you don't normally question. Like, It'll make you compare things that are never gonna give you happiness. And we must remember, as a human and as someone in this industry, comparison is what of joy? The thief of joy. Comparison is the thief of joy. I'm gonna say that one more time. Comparison is the thief of joy. Why do I say that? Because when you compare yourself, you're going to be unhappy. And there's a, there's a healthy amount of comparing yourself in terms of 
what you can be doing to advance your career compared to people your age, your same type, whatever. But you have to remember that you, this is a positive thing, you are uniquely you and no one else is you. And you're the only person who has a special pair of sunglasses. That's one of a kind, right? Versace can make four pairs of sunglasses and there's still four pairs of sunglasses of this you know, elite special pair. But you as a 3D human and your body and your, your whole makeup of your life, you are one of a kind. You are one pair of sunglasses that's never gonna be made again. So, weight. Why do they ask for weight? They ask for weight because they wanna get a sense of how you look. And it's not to embarrass you, it's to just get an idea of who you are and what you look like and how you're gonna fit in the clothes, how you're gonna look on set, how you're gonna go with the product, whatever, whatever, right? I mean, we don't see people in McDonald's ads who are like 400 pounds. We really should, in my opinion. I think we should see everybody on screen. I think we should see anybody from size zero, someone in a wheelchair, someone who has different skin types, acne, not acne, whatever. I really think we need more representation and I'm a big advocate of that. I'm like an activist actually of representation and diversity and inclusivity, but that's another topic. So, I, this might seem controversial, but with the weight question, you really wanna go by how you look like you weigh, not what you actually weigh. Like for me, I actually lift weights and I'm really into fitness, but I'm little, I'm 5'1", and I'm not a size zero, but I'm strong and I am fit and I am in good shape. But I also like, am not somebody who looks like I'm a lean runner, for example. I look like someone who is strong, but also is curvy, and there's a whole category of that called slim thick, which is what a lot of hip hop rappers talk about, but it's actually been used now in the casting calls and the breakdowns and the emails, believe it or not. So you need to get the time, so you need to know what's going on with trends, and you need to know where you fit in in those trends so you know how to market yourself, because honestly, some of this business is talent, some of it's memorization, some of it's networking, but really most of it is marketing, most of it is business, and that's why I teach these classes, and that's why this is so important to understand. And honestly, if you're not an actor model, this is so important for your life, because nowadays everybody's a brand, everybody's a CEO, everybody's an entrepreneur, so like, you know, this is what we're living in. So, go by how you look. Now that's also hard because like I look like I weigh this, but someone who actually weighs this and has a different height is gonna look so different because we have different body makeups, we have different body compositions, we have different BMIs, we have different BMPs, we have different genes, we have different exercise activity levels, right? I know, that's all crazy. And I honestly wish they would just get rid of the idea of asking for your weight numerically because it's like, why does this matter? But they're honestly just trying to get a sense of how you look. So. If you're 5'1", and you're a size six to eight, and you weigh this much, but you actually look like you weigh this much, then you should like scale it to how much you look like you weigh, because they, you don't wanna be surprising them. You don't wanna be like, oh my God, I thought she looked like that, and now she looks like this, or I don't I know she looked like that, she looks like this. It's like, whatever it is, it's such a subjective business, it's such a business of opinions, so just know that you need to market it, and not lie, but I'm telling you to make your numbers look like how you look. Like, for example, I'll take my measurements right now. I have nothing to hide. I'm obviously an actor and model. Here it is. So my bust is 36, my waist is 30, and my hips are 40. That's a 10 inch difference in my waist and my hip, and that's a lot. Okay? What I'm saying is, I'm telling you that because if you looked at how much I weighed numerically and you looked at my measurements, you'd be like, wow, she weighs more than I thought she does. But this is the thing, it's actually muscle a lot of times. Of course, there's fat too, but there's muscle too. So the point is, is that. I look like I weigh less than I do. So for my resume, I put that I weigh less because that's how I look and that's how I'm marketing myself because medically speaking, they don't really care how much I weigh. They care how much I look like I weigh. So you need to care about what they care about so that you can care about it and you can all book jobs and make money and hey, have a good career. So that's that topic. All right, moving on. I hope that I enjoyed that part. Here we're gonna go, we're gonna go to the next part. Measurements, oh, I actually already talked about this. So here we go, um, measurements. You need to know your measurements like the back of your hand. You need to know your measurements like you know your social security number. If you know your social security number, where you get it together, what are you doing? You need to know your measurements like you know your address. You need to know your measurements like you know your email address. You need to know your measurements like you know your social media handles. You need to know your measurements like you know your emergency contacts, phone numbers. If you don't get it together, I need to get that together. I'm not perfect, thank you. Okay, you need to know your measurements like you know the question of answers of, what's your story? And what else do you do besides acting? And what are your hobbies? What are you passionate about? These are basic questions you're gonna be asked all the time in the acting world. 
Your job and the modeling world, your job is literally to interview. Your job is to audition. Your job is to go see. Like I have friends who are corporate. I have friends who are not artists and they're like, oh, I have a job interview. Uh, and I'm like, I have a job interview every five seconds. I'm an actor. Like what? And I'm just like, okay, good luck. But see that weight, that special event occasion of I have a job interview. Oh my God, what do I do? Is you can't be like that. Your job is to interview. Your job is to meet random people every time and be like, hi, my name is, and this is who I am, and this is my story, right? So you need to understand the package you're presenting. You need to understand your product and be able to be like, what's your sales pitch? What's your elevator pitch? Meaning, hi, my name is Sophia Guchinov. I'm 5'1", I weigh this, these are my sizes, this is my product, this is what I'm good at, this is what I specialize in, I do a lot of this kind of stuff, I do a lot of that kind of stuff. You need to know that, right? So I'm gonna tell you right now. Hi, my name is Sophia Guchinov. I'm 5'1", I live in New York City. I am a go-getter, workout, passionate, funny, sassy, but can do equally dramatic roles, activist who does performance art, multidisciplinary artist, who's passionate about the environment, meditation, humanity, charity, fitness, travel, photography, deep conversations, and I do a lot of hosting, voiceover, commercial work, and I am ethnically ambiguous and biracial and mixed, period. I hope you understood all that. That is me in a nutshell, right? I mean, pretty hard to put my whole human in a you know two minute thing, but I'm trying to tell you this so you can understand where you can get good at marketing yourself, right? So if I was to ask you, what is Apple's brand? Okay, Apple is, I'm gonna tell you right now, I'm gonna give you an example. We're gonna make this real life. We're gonna relate this to real life. I'm really meant to metaphors and analogies, so I hope it'll help you with understanding this because I'm trying to like, make this all easy for you. So, hey, um, I'm new to the world. What's Apple? Can I eat an apple? Oh, so funny you should ask. Apple is a multi-billion dollar company founded by Steve Jobs, founded in California, America, and they basically founded the MacBook computer and iPhone and iPods and now Apple Watch and AirTags and so many other things they actually own, Beats by Dre, um, they have Apple TV, they have a whole streaming company, but their basics is that it's customizable, user um, friendly user interface, all about seamless. If you have an Apple phone and you have an Apple computer, things will work very easily through AirDrop. They have Safari, they have their own um, iOS system, operating system of working, and they're great for creatives. But if you want more of a customizable gamer interface, more of a Google-based one, you should go to Android. That was me selling you Apple. I hope I sold Apple just as well as I sold myself, because that's my career. But um, yeah, so you need to know your measurements just as well as you know the cost of the Apple iPhone so you know when someone's like, how much does it cost? You're gonna be like, well the Apple 13 is available for trade-in right now at Verizon for free if you upgrade your plan, upgrade your phone, and trade in your phone. And my measurements are this, this, and this, and this. It's just like that. You know, you gotta look at it as a business. And when you look at it as a business, it'll help you take the pressure off of yourself It'll help you understand things and stop looking at this as some beautiful, esoteric, you know, thing that only certain people can do. And it's like this whole magical thing. Honestly, it is magical and it is beautiful and only certain people can do it. Don't get me wrong. But what I'm trying to tell you is that if you look at this industry as more of a business and less of a creative throw spaghetti at the wall and see what sticks, you're going to be more successful. You're going to have more of a mental strong mindset approach and you'll just be better not to say that I don't go crazy when I got an audition yesterday from my agent and do it an hour and I would laugh at my email and I was like that's funny and I didn't do it but I'm just giving you an example so measurements know your measurements moving on okay this is terms that are used these are terms that are used in the casting calls and you should see and you should get used to and you need to know what they mean. You can always Google them, but sometimes things are not available on Google because like this is like more like if you're in the industry, you know these terms. If you're not in the industry, you don't know these terms. Okay. Real bodies, real people, full bodied, slim thick, full figured size, um, like plus size, whatever. So this is kind of tricky because the acting industry has changed a lot. The modeling industry has changed a lot, but it also is kind of like subjective. Did I freeze? Oh my God, I'm back. So, technically speaking, petite models are 5'7 and below. 
I'm like five sevens tall. I'm five one. I know, but that's the way it is. Um, plus size is technically anything like above a six. And the question is, well, is six plus size? It really depends on who you ask. But zero to four is not plus size. Um, but if you look at the traditional average woman or man or person in America, most people are not a size zero, most people are not five seven. Average height is five four for a woman. I don't know what a man is. I think it may be five ten, maybe even less. Um, and the size is like 12, 14, maybe even more. But what I'm trying to tell you is that you need to know these terms. When it says real people cast, that means you're not looking for actors. Obviously, you're an actor and model. You wouldn't be reading it if you were. Hello, I know, crazy. But if you happen to actually be a lawyer pursuing this crazy career and they're looking for lawyers, then you would submit for that. If they're looking for people who de deliver Amazon packages and you don't do that, but you're an actor who wants to do that and they're looking for real people, do not submit. Do not. They're looking for real people. They're going to ask for your badge. They're going to ask you to have a uniform. They're going to ask for things you can't provide unless you actually do that job and are a real person in that field. So get it together. I know what you're doing. Okay. Moving on. Um, full bodied, full figure just means someone who is not a size two or four. But honestly, if you are one of these sizes and you happen to be curvy or you happen to have this body type that is what they're looking for, then maybe you should submit. You know, it's subjective. Honestly, the worst thing they're gonna do is just not look at you and move on to the next person. But if you intuitively feel that, hey, I can do this, this fits my role, this fits my measurements, this fits my size, this fits my specs, dimensions and numbers, whatever, then yeah, you should submit, okay? Um, slim thick is a term I said before, used in a lot of hip hop songs, but it basically means that you are fit looking and possibly being but you have more meat on your bones, so you're curvier, but you, um, you can, like, it's hard to, I don't really know how to define it. Um, I guess I'd give you an example. Like, I mean, I don't like to example, give examples of people who have gotten their bodies done because you can get this body without getting your body done. And I, I'm a fan of being natural, but if you want to do that, that's fine. But um, Cardi B and Nicki Minaj um, are slim thick. Olivia Rodrigo is not slim thick. Avril Lavigne is not slim thick. Taylor Swift is not slim thick. Um, I hope that gives you a good idea of what I'm trying to tell you. It's kind of hard to put into words. Uh, yeah, okay, let's move on. Clothes to complement shape. So this is important, um, especially when you're selling your product, you want your product to look as best as it can look at all times. You know, you're also a human, you wanna have fun. So um, I'd say when you buy clothes and if you go to a lot of like raves or concerts, you might wanna redirect your spending in terms of, I need to buy clothes that I can wear to professional settings and auditions and go-sees and wear on camera and on set and for my shoots. Now, if your brand is like party girl, whatever, then more power to you get whatever you think is going to bring you money and be profitable and financially successful and um booking in this business so whatever works for you but for me i do a lot of hosting like on camera teleprompter whatever kind of stuff so i have i tend to have a lot of like button downs and blazers and corporate shirts and slacks and black business shoes for example I also have a lot of fitness clothes because I do a lot of fitness, like active girl type of bookings. So I have a lot of like biker shorts, leggings, sports bras, crop tops, um, that kind of stuff. So I have this that I actually use in my genuine life that I also use in my professional creative endeavors, whether that be acting or modeling. So, you know, a lot of times you're gonna lean into your strengths in, in this in this industry in the beginning. Like if you are an avid biker, you're probably gonna go out for biker roles and that's amazing because you're going to do well with that. Like for example, Charlize Theron, who is a famous actor and model, um, blonde, she's in her like 40s or 50s, I don't know what she is, but she's really successful and um, she's beautiful and she always wanted to do more serious roles and you know like less girlfriend roles but she knew 
that her foot in the door of this industry was to play into the stereotype and was to play into what she's good at, which was the girlfriend. So she did that until she got big enough in her career and got far enough down the line where she could say and have agency and be like, okay, I don't wanna book those roles anymore. I'm gonna make my own roles or I'm gonna go for roles that I'm the leading character, I'm the CEO, I'm the boss woman, you know? So she leaned into that to get herself in the door and then she's turned the uh, page, flipped the switch and was able to um, do what she actually wanted to do down the line, but she had to earn it. And I'm not saying everybody does, but you know, that basically is marketing. She marketed herself in the way that she knew people would accept her and um, what she was good at until she could let them know and let her be taken seriously that she was good at other things too. So just a thought, there's a lot of professionals out there who have that kind of story. Just good to think about. Good to know about these, about other people's stories, very important. So you wanna buy clothes that are complementing your shape, especially if you are um, full body, real body, plus size, slim thick, whatever um so you want to maybe like if you have a smaller waist and larger hips you want to wear things that are more like complementing of the x or hourglass figure like something that maybe is tighter in the bust and the waist but then goes out on the hips maybe like a skirt and like a crop top or like a tighter button down shirt and a dress that goes out and if you're taller, you are cool with wearing maxi dresses because it can accentuate your height and make you look good with your legs long. But if you're shorter, you might want to wear more shorts to show your legs because you are not having that height. So this is what I'm trying to help you understand. It's all about branding. Hello, Joshua. If you have any questions, please let me know. Um, so that can help you with your branding. Very important. Knowing your colors, I've this before in other uh, webinars. Like, for example, if lavender is good for you because it brings out your green eyes and you need to wear more lavender, if purple is good for you, wear deep purples. If browns are good, if you're more of an earth tone, um, that kind of stuff. Um, if, sorry, the sirens. Um, if you have a cool undertones of your skin, maybe wear different colors. If you know your makeup is better when you wear more golds or silvers. That's good for your jewelry, for example. Um, knowing your angles is another one, which is my next top, my next point. So it's like, if you are, you know, curvier, maybe you do better with not having such a straight on angle. Maybe you do better with angling your body to show that curve of your physique. Um, maybe you do good with over the shoulders, you know, like that kind of stuff. Maybe you do better like with your face shape. Like I have a rounder oval diamond shape. I don't have like I have like a wider face. So for example, for me, when I'm on camera, when the camera is a wide angle, it makes my face look bigger than it is. So I've learned to try to angle my neck in a way where I still look good on camera because you wanna make sure that you're doing the best you can in your given circumstances when you are behind and uh, in front of the camera, not behind the camera, because you're not behind the camera, you can't really see what you look like. But it's always good to be like, oh, can I just see how I look? Or can I get a screen test? Or can you take a picture of the monitor so I can see? So it's always good to be aware of how you're looking because you want to be your best self. And you know, if you want your footage and your pictures and your frames, you want to make sure you're happy with them. The worst thing in the world is to literally do a shoot, photo shoot or video, and think it's going well. And then you get the footage back and you're like, wow, it's horrible. And you don't want to use any of it. Like you don't want to waste your time. I mean, it's always good to get credits and build connections, but you also want the footage. Like you are literally an actor and model and your brand is you and you need that footage. So like, you know, it's cool from selling these sunglasses, but if I don't have any sunglasses to sell and I'm just telling you about the brand and you're like, this seems so cool. Can I get a pair? And I'm like, oh, I don't have it. It's like, you don't have any footage? Well, you need to get that together. So that's one thing. Okay. Another thing is comfortability of shoots in terms of being body positive, how we can be models. So there's a bunch of different shoots you can do. There's lingerie, there's swim, there's fitness, there's makeup, there's catalog, there's family, there's coffee products, there's sneakers. Anything in the world that you see that you buy can be advertised in a commercial print runway um, video setting, right? So you need to know what you're okay with. Like if you really like to wear bikinis, and you love to take photos with them, then you should probably lean into that and submit yourself for bikini um, advertisements like Fenty Beauty or Victoria's Secret or Aerie. Um, Aerie is a great example. They do a lot of uh, real people casting. 
Uh, so there's Fenty Beauty, a lot of inclusivity. Victoria's Secret now has recently changed where they're including people of different sizes and shapes, which is awesome. A little late to the game, but you know, I'll take it. I'm happy for them. At least they caught up somehow, right? Um, so you can lean into that. But if you're getting a lot of questions like, oh, can you do this lingerie shoot? Hey, can you do this bikini shoot? Hey, can you do this leotard shoot? And you're like, I don't really feel comfortable doing that. I don't like that with my body type. I don't want to do that. I don't want to show them your skin. Guess what? You are under no obligation, under nobody, under anybody to literally say yes, right? You're, you're the boss of your career. You're the bookkeeper. You're the accountant. Like I said before, you're everything. So if you don't want to do a shoot, you just say, no, thank you. I'm not comfortable this time. I'll let you know in the future if I change my mind. Thank you so much for the opportunity. I hope you have a great shoot. Let me know in the future if there's other opportunities that are not lingerie that I can do for you. I'd love to still work with you. You want to be professional. Don't ever burn a bridge, right? But um, don't do things you don't want to do. You know, do things you're actually comfortable doing, which is very important. That's, you know, you want to create those healthy boundaries of like, okay, okay I'll do makeup and I'll do implied where I'll have like, I'll be doing a skincare shoot and I'll have no straps here and I'll be bare skinned, but I won't do anything where I have to wear a bikini and I have to show my stomach. For example, that's just an example, right? So you want to be available in terms of how you market yourself and don't be afraid to say no. In this industry, you're told a lot. Say yes to everything, say yes to everything. And yeah, it's important to say yes to opportunities and put yourself out there. But if you're putting yourself out there in a way where you don't feel safe or comfortable, that's not good. You're not going to help yourself and you're going to look crazy on the, in the pictures or on the video. You're going to look like this. You're going to look uncomfortable. And they don't want that. You don't want that. Nobody wants that. So don't say us things you are not comfortable doing in the first place. Really check in with your own self and your intuition and be like, oh my God, do I want to do this? Do I not want to do this? And honestly, if you're asking yourself, do I want to do this? Do I not want to do this? You probably don't want to do it. So you should just say no, because guess what? There's a lot of opportunities in this business. People like to act like there's a scarcity. I mean, yes, there's a lot of jobs and there's a lot of people and there's not as many people as jobs. We know that, but don't forget, as someone who makes their own work, you can always make your own work. I'm a big fan of making your own work, being your own self-sufficient um, artist. So don't wait for someone to give you a job. Make those photo shoots yourself. Get a friend, get comfortable, get a nice camera, get an iPhone, whatever you want, and have a photo shoot of your own. Honestly, sometimes the best photos come from your friends and not from a professional setting. You know, you don't want to think that you have to be spending all this crazy amount of money to be a professional actor or model. You do have to spend money, but you have to start somewhere and you don't have to start with a 4,000, 1,500, whatever dollar photo shoot. Trade for print's a great thing, TFP. You exchange photos for the experience and um, you are able to like, get free photos in exchange for helping someone build a portfolio. But the thing about this is you have to be careful and you have to make sure you like the person. You feel comfortable with the person. You go to coffee or tea with the person. You meet them at a cafe. You're like, hey, let's talk about it. You have a phone call with them. You ask them about the NDA, non-disclosure agreement. You ask them when you're gonna get the raw files. If you're going to get the raw files, you're gonna ask them when you're gonna get the editing photos. You're gonna ask them if they can remove a watermark. You're gonna ask them if they can publish it, when you can publish it, you can post it on Instagram, just your website. What kind of way they wanna be credited? Is there a charge? How are you guys arranging payment? Have you seen their existing work already? Do you know what kind of vibe of a photographer they are? I'm not gonna lie, a lot of men are photographers in this business and as a woman, you have to be careful and be safe. Don't be afraid to bring a friend on set. You can totally bring a friend on set. You can always bring a friend when you meet somebody. That's a very popular thing in the industry. If somebody says they don't want you bringing a friend, that's weird and that's a red flag and you should walk away, okay? So, let's just sum this all up. Body positive webinar, how real people can be models. Weight, measurements, terminology in the casting industry in terms of this topic. Clothes to comment your shape, angles, comfortability of shoots, and building your portfolio. So here we are. I hope you guys enjoyed this webinar. I hope I was of service and help to you all beautiful people out there. I wish you the best of luck. Have fun. Take care of yourselves. Drink water. If you have any questions, you can DM me. I'm going to put my handle up. My name is Sophia Guchinoff at Latitude Talent Studios. This will be posted on YouTube on their um, channel. If you miss it, if you have to check in late, no problem. I think it also goes on a podcast on Spotify on their channel, so you can totally see it there. And my name is Sophia, S-O-P-H-I-A-G-U-T-C-H-I-N-O-V. 
and I'm a working artist, model, actor in New York City. Thank you guys. Bye.